Good morning, everybody, um, and I'd like to welcome you all to today's um, webinar. Today, we will be discussing PV Genset systems with Fronius and ELU. Firstly, before we go on to the content for today's webinar, I'd like to introduce your team for today. I'm Mohamed Sidat. I'm the Technical Sales Advisor for Fronius for Southern Africa. I'd also like to introduce my colleague, Cyprian Nakolo, who is the Technical Sales Advisor for Western Africa. Um, Cyprian will be on chat support to answer any Fronius questions which come by. David Mwangi will be the um, will be also joining me in the second part of today's um, Fronius content. He is, is the Technical Sales Advisor for Eastern Africa. I'd also like to introduce the two ELUM staff who will be with us today. Um, I'd like to introduce Victorian Telangi. Um, he is the Sales Manager for South Africa. And he will be presenting the ELUM content in the second half of today's presentation. I'd also like to introduce Rawad Youssef, um, who is the Sales Manager for Eastern Africa. He will be on chat support to answer any ELUM questions that do come by. To cover today's agenda, the first part will be covered by Fronius. Uh, we will give you a basic introduction to Fronius. We will also give you an introduction to PV Genset technology. Uh, we will discuss what is a PV Genset system. We will also discuss what are the use cases of PV Genset systems. We will then move on and discuss the system design with Fronius PV Genset solutions, which will then be presented by my colleague David. He will go into how to dimension and control a PV Genset system. And we will also go further into our PV Genset Easy Solution, and we'll also cover the Advanced Solution, which is where Elum Energy now comes into, the, into play. Um, we'll also discuss the key compatibilities between Fronius and Elum, um, after which my colleague David will then hand over to um, Victorian from Elum, who will then discuss um, Elum Energy and also um, portray and show to you the different um, hybrid solutions and PV Genset solutions that hybrid does that um, Ilium does offer for the markets. So the company Fronius, uh, we have three business units. Um, this company was formed in 1945. And the first business unit which was born was the perfect charging business unit in 1945. Uh, we then followed up in 1950 with the perfect welding um, business unit, And we then started off the solar business unit in 1992. Just to give you a product portfolio of all our solar inverters that we have manufactured since 1995. Uh, the first one we did manufacture in 1995 was the Fronius Sunrise. We then introduced the Fronius IG series um, in the 2000s. And then from 2012, we then introduced the big central Fronius Agilo um, inverter, after which in 2013, we then introduced our Snap Inverter range, which is the inverter range which is currently on the market being sold. And we started off the, with the Fronius Galvo, and then we released a few more snap inverters up until the Fronius Simo hybrid. From 2020 onwards, uh, we have released the Fronius Simo Gen 24 Plus, which is a hybrid inverter. And we'll also be following, at, um, following up with the Fronius Primo Gen 24 Plus, which is the single phase variant of this hybrid series. Uh, next year, we'll also be introducing the Fronius Taro, uh, which will be our big commercial inverter. It goes up to 100 kilowatts, so that will be very handy in um, big CNI projects. Just to give a very brief overview of our Snap Inverter series. So to start off with, uh, we'll look at the different residential inverters um, that we have in our Snap Inverter portfolio. We have the Primo 3 to 8.2 kilowatts inverter range. Um, these are the um, class variants and size variants you can purchase them in. Um, they each have two MPPT trackers. They are a single phase inverter. They are a transformerless topology and the efficiency is 98% and level of protection is IP65, which means you can install this indoors and outdoors. Uh, what's very important to note with the Fronius Primo is that you can string them together to make a bigger system. So you can make, let's say, a 16 kilowatt um, system using two um, Primo 8.2s, as an example. I'd also like to introduce the Simo range, which is our small three-phase um, inverter range. They start from 3 kilowatts up until 8.2 kilowatts. 
It has two MPPD trackers. It's a three-phase inverter. It's a transformerless topology. Um, efficiency is 98%, and the overlock protection is IP65. Again, with the Fronia Simer, you can string them up together. And just remember, you can um, get much more info on both these inverters by um, consulting one of us after today's webinar or maybe attending a future webinar where we discuss the snap inverters in detail. Also introducing our commercial range, um, starting off with the Simo 10 to 20 kilowatts, three phase inverter. With this inverter, it comes in these following um, power classes. It has two MPP trackers and um, you can attach three springs onto each tracker of 1000 volts DC each. It's a three phase inverter. The input voltage is 200 volts DC to 1000 volts DC. And it has extremely high efficiency rate of 98.3% and level of protection is IP66. Then moving on to the Fronius Eco, um, it comes either a 25 kilowatt variant or 27 kilowatt variant, and it is a three phase inverter. It only has one NPPD tracker, which you can install up to six strings on. It's a three phase inverter. Your input voltage range is from 580 volts DC to 1000 volts DC. It has a very high efficiency rate of 98.3% and the level of protection is IP66. Um, so all these four inverters that I have shown you now on the screen, um, they all are compatible with our PV Gensets um, solution, whether it's the advanced solution, the easy solution, or even the professional solution. Um, all these snap inverters are compatible. Moving on, I will now introduce you to PV Genset technologies. Starting off with the Fronius PV Genset Easy Solution. Um, this is a solution that is developed by Fronius. So uh, what we have in this system is we have a completely off-grid system uh, where you've got your Fronius inverters. Okay, you've got your diesel genset. Um, you then have what we call your Fronius PV control. Okay, and we also have the consumer, which is the load. Okay, so what's very important in the system is that your Fronius inverters are basically converting the DC from your panels into AC. Um, the AC will then get sent to the load um, and after which you also have a CT which will detect um, the amount of power the load is drawing and send this information to the PV controller which will then control the Fronius PV inverters. Okay, I will go into more detail on this but more later in the slides. Also with our easy solution, which is the solution developed by Fronius, you can also incorporate the grid to the system. Um, so in this example, I've got the grid, I've got a gen set, and I've got your Fronius PV inverters. So when the grid is online, your Fronius PV inverters just reduce the amount of um, power you're putting from the grid. And you can also send power to the grid as well with this controller. So with this controller, you can set zero feed in, and you can also send, um, set a percentage feed in threshold. Um, when the grid is gone, um, basically the genset um, will now be the reference point for the Fronius inverters, providing a voltage and frequency reference. And the Fronius inverters will also stay online when the genset comes back, um, when the genset kicks up. And the whole purpose now of the controller when the genset is up and running is that the controller will now um, prevent backfeed to the genset, and the controller will also throttle down the PV inverters in order to ensure that we always maintain a minimum um, genset um, load, okay, minimum running load for the genset. Okay, just to provide further information on each component on, of the system, um, the first being the Fronis inverter. The Fronis inverter basically um, converts your direct current from the solar modules into alternating currents and provides a PV, just, a PV genset system which has as much PV energy as possible. Okay, the second part of the system is the Fronis PV system controller. Um, this PV system controller measures all power flows in the system. It enables um, it enables the control of the PV power in the most optimum manner possible. Component three is your diesel generator. The diesel generator is the primary source of energy in the PV genset system. The PV energy relieves the diesel generator, which again saves a lot of fuel. What's very important to note is um, if you do run a um, diesel genset, um, the cost to run a diesel genset can be more than three times higher than actually getting power from the grid. Um, so that's also another very important um, you know, design aspect um, in order for you as an installer to you know, prescribe compliance of the benefits of a PV genset system. Okay, um, the fourth component would be the load. Um, the consumers are supplied with the optimal mix between fossil and solar energies by the PV genset system. 
Component five is your current sensors. Your current sensors will basically detect the amount of energy that is going to the load. And this information will then be sent to the Fronius PV controller. The Fronius PV controller will then do a calculation uh, where it will basically um, base the calculation on the, the amount of energy coming from the PV inverters and the amount of energy that is consumed by the load in order to determine um, the exact set points in the system and whether or not the PV inverters need to be throttled or not. Okay, your sixth component is a grid. Uh, so when your grid is online, your diesel genset is obviously switched off. And in this case, your PV inverters will now assist the grid and decrease the amount of energy you're now pulling from the grid. Uh, with this controller, you can also set in, you can also set a zero feeding limitation. Um, so as you do know, a lot of municipalities in Africa don't allow you to feed in into the grid. Uh, so using this Fronius PV controller, you can set that zero feeding limitation in order to prevent any backfeed to the grid in a PV genset system. Okay, your seventh um, component, this is your backup feedback contactor, or what we also um, basically name it as a ATS, which stands for an automatic transfer switch. Uh, so basically, in between all these components in the system, you have the automatic transfer switch, which will be sitting there. And the sole purpose of the automatic transfer switch is basically um, when the grid is there, it provides a leeway for the AC bus to go from the grid to your loads. Uh, when the grid now goes down, um, the ATS will now detect this and will now switch over to its secondary position. And its secondary position will basically provide a leeway for your um, AC bus and your AC power coming from your diesel genset to enter into the system and to provide power to your load. Okay. Um, what's also sitting in the system, which is not shown on this picture, is a normally open switch. And this normally open switch will be um, directly connected to the Fronius PV controller. And the normally open switch is usually energized by the grid. And when the grid goes down, uh, your normally open switch will now go into the secondary state and this will then be detected by the controller and using this principle the controller can now detect whether the grid is online or whether the genset is online in order to determine specific set points for the pv inverters just to go into detail on the different cts that are available for our unfronted pv system controller um, we do have three phase cts these are mc3 250 amp cts we also have single phase CTs, um, which go up to 1,500 amps. And we also have the bigger single phase MC1-80, which goes up to 2,000 amps. Okay, just remember with our CTs, you can use three single phase CTs in order to combine it into a much larger three phase system. Um, our CTs have a secondary current of 250 milliamps, which makes them extremely accurate and also, also it provides extremely good regulation in the system. Um, what's also very important to note with our um, Fronius PV Genset Easy Solution is that we only recommend that you use a single genset, okay? And if you are going to use more than one genset, these gensets need to be completely in sync. Um, so what I do mean by completely in sync, um, all these genset ha gensets have to switch on and switch off at the same time, and they also have to operate at the same frequency and voltage as each other. Um, this is now where the Fronius ELU um, partnership comes in handy, is when you do not have a system whereby um, your gensets are in sync. And this is now when we do suggest that you look towards the Illum, Fronius Illum solution, where you can now take multiple gensets um, that are not in sync and also add battery storage to the system um, in order to have a complete hybrid solution. What are typical PV genset use cases? And um, the first one being a utility. And this is for off-grid regions, weak grid regions, and also unreliable grid security. Also remote industries, such as the mining industry, oil and gas drilling, and desalination plants. Again, these are all very remote industries where the likelihood of there being a reliable grid supply is not very likely. Okay, real estate, um, office buildings, warehouses, um, headquarters, also, also other applications, such as hotels, resorts. Um, some of these resorts could be on islands, which um, in order to get Electricity from a public grid could be difficult. Um, also, agriculture and irrigation systems as well. What are the advantages of PV genset systems? Um, the first one being the return of investment. So you can get real business case, um, you know, return of investment in very high irradiation areas, such as the case in Africa. Um, again, you also get very good cost reduction, and this can save expensive fuel and transportation costs. You also get a risk reduction, and this is with the high 
reliability and resilience. Uh, because basically now you've got PV in the fold, you basically have a genset in the fold, you also have the grid in the fold, and also using the in-loop controllers, you can also now incorporate battery storage. So you basically have four sources of energy in your system. And this creates a very um, high reliable system that very has extremely good resilience. Um, also very good independence, so no dependence on the public electricity grid. And also your payback period. I mean, your typical payback periods are five years or less, um, which is extremely good. What are the core components of a Fronius PV genset system? Um, the first one being is a Fronius inverter, and this is the full compatibility across our entire SNAP inverter range. Um, also with the diesel gensets, and um, this is the high priority with the system, stable operation and protection of the diesel genset. So this is what we can all provide. Uh, just please note, with the diesel genset, we're not really fussy with the type of manufacturer that um, can, you know, um, cooperate with our system. Uh, we are pretty much open to any automatic genset out there. Um, in terms of the controlling um, mechanism, um, so we've got your Fronius PV genset easy solution, uh, which is a solution I talked about. And just remember with this solution, it is only applicable for a system which has gensets that are completely in sync and that are generally in the range of about 1.2 megawatt max. Okay, that's very important. Um, the second solution is a Fronius PV genset advanced solution, and this is where Illum comes into the fold. And with this um, solutions and systems, you can generally um, go bigger than 1.2 megawatts, and you can have um, more than one genset that is completely unsync with the other gensets, and you can also incorporate um, battery storage as well into the system. Okay, we also have a Fronius PV genset professional solution, uh, which we will not be going into in today's presentation. I would just like to share a basic return of investment with a PV genset solution. Um, this is a case example of a system that was installed. Um, it was a PV genset easy solution by Fronius. Um, the initial cost of this um, of the PV plant was 216,000 euros. Okay, the PV plant size was 144 kilowatt peak, um, and the yield of the PV plant was 237,000 kilowatt hours um, per year. Um, the diesel generator, in order to produce a kilowatt hour, it was costing this business 25 euro cents, and the PV system it costed the business um, in order to you know over those years about 10 euro cents per kilowatt hour. So you can already see the automatic saving of about 15 euro cents per kilowatt hour. Okay, this initial investment of 216,000 euros was made on the PV plant. Um, this business then made a saving of 35,640 um, euros each year, and this was saved on diesel. Okay, so from the sixth year onwards, they completely paid back the PV plant. So this initial cost of the PV plant was paid back. Um, just by making an annual saving um, on the diesel of each year. From the seventh year onwards, um, this business was um, saving 59,400 euros per year. And this is an extremely high amount um, that, you know, from the seventh year onwards, they can save. And as you know, with a PV system, such as a Proteus PV system, um, this PV system can easily last more than 20 years. I'll now be launching a poll. Um, I would really appreciate if everybody could you know, share their inputs. Um, so I will be launching the poll now. Okay, the question, what size of PV installations do you mostly install? Okay, I've got four, um, four options on the screen. Um, the first one being zero to 10 kilowatts. Second one, 10 to 100 kilowatts, which is pretty much where commercial installations start. And we then have 100 kilowatts to one megawatts, where we can consider small to medium commercial. Um, and then we have one megawatt plus, which would be more on the utility um, side um, side of things. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate for you know everybody to just share their response. Okay, I would like to share the results with you. Um, what size of PV installations do you mostly install? And we see that the majority of today's attendees, um, sitting at 51%, um, are installers that are very active in the range of 10 to 100 kilowatts, uh, which, to be honest, is a very good range to be using phonies inverters. 
um, well, our SNAP inverters. And then we also have a good attendance that is, you know, 28% from 100 kilowatts to one megawatt plus, which again, the Fronius Eco and Fronius Simo will do extremely well in that range. And again, we also have these small residential installers on here today from zero to 10 kilowatts as well. Okay, I'd like to now hand over to my colleague, David Mangi, who will now continue with the second half of the Fronius presentation. Um, David, if you could please come online. For the first exciting part of the presentation. So I'll now be taking uh, our attendees today through the second part of the Fronius presentation, in which we will be dealing with um, starting with the design of the PV genset solutions. So there are a number of things that uh, an installer or a designer of a system must bear in mind when you are designing a PV genset solution. And in this case, we would like to play particular emphasis to the PV genset easy solution from Fronius. So number one, you have to look at the recommended genset minimum load. And this is 30% of the rated uh, nominal power of the generator or the rated KVA of the generator. So the generator cannot be operated below 30% of that rated nominal KVA. And this is to avoid uh, poor efficiency, increased uh, wear and tear of the generator, which then would mean that your OPEX on the generator is a bit high. You also have to consider what is the load profile. This is very crucial uh, for the PV genset solution. And this means you'll take look, a look at what is your daytime peak load as well as the average day load. This is important because you are designing then a PV solution and integrating this into a genset grid for you to be able to save uh, energy costs, especially on diesel. As you know, uh, production of the PV system is going to be happening only during the day. And therefore, David? the consideration of the peak. Yeah. David, uh, please share screen. Okay, sorry about that. Is it fine now? Perfect, thank you very much. Okay, I have to go back to where I started. So we're looking at the design rules. Uh, just quickly go back to my beginning. Sorry about the lost screen. So when you're designing a PV genset solution, consider, as I mentioned, the minimum genset loading, which has to be 30% of the rated nominal power of the generator. So that, as uh, I said, uh, provides uh, uh, protection against poor efficiency and increased wear and tear of the generator. Then look at what is the load profile. Uh, this is very crucial, uh, peak daytime load and average daytime load, because PV production is going to be happening only during the day. Uh, and therefore, you have to consider what is the maximum day load that you can power using the PV system. And then on top of that, you look at the sizing of the PV system only. Uh, there's a difference between now what is the maximum inverter power and what is the maximum array power that you can integrate into the system. Our inverters, once you look at the detailed specifications, you're going to see that they allow quite a bit of oversizing on the DC side. So the kilowatt peak in the system can be quite different from the inverter nominal power. To give you a better idea into this design aspect of the PV genset solution, we look at uh, this graph where we are looking at uh, an installation with an active uh, power range of about 1.8 megawatts or 1,800 kilowatts. Uh, to start, as we said, look at what is the minimum genset loading, which we can see here just about 500 uh, kilowatt. And then also importantly, uh, look at what is the maximum allowable inverter power in the system. And that will be guided by considering what is the average daytime load, as you can see here. And that would be just below 1.2 megawatts. And then what is the PV array that you can integrate into this system? And therefore, this is giving us a maximum of about 1.4 megawatts. And then peak load uh, is coming to about 1.7 megawatts for following this load profile throughout a 24 hour period. So we can see our peak load is uh, about 1.7 megawatts. From this data, what we can see or what we can deduce is that uh, our minimum genset loading has to be 540 kilowatt peak. 
and from our peak load of about uh, 1.8 megawatts uh, or 1.7 uh, megawatts, it leaves a space of about 1.16 if we remove uh, 540 kilowatts. So we have about 1.16 megawatts for inverter power. Considering the average daytime load of about 1.2 megawatts, and then we minus what is the minimum genset loading, that leaves a space of about 0 0.6 megawatts for inverter power. So that leads the, to the question, considering these two uh, figures of 1.16 megawatts and 0 0.66 megawatts, what would be the right uh, amount of PV power to have in the system? So the inverter power range, therefore, uh, will depend on the load profile. And this has to be taken by hour to hour resolution so that you can see how much PV power can you effectively integrate into the system, considering the minimum genset loading of 30%. If you look at the PV array, as I mentioned, uh, if you are using the Fronius uh, project inverters that my colleagues refer to as the echo inverters, you are allowed to over-design the DC side by up to 137%. If you take our Fronius Simo commercial series, you can over-design the DC side by up to 150%. And therefore, you can have a lot more uh, DC power in the system than the comparable inverter power. That, of course, assists to ensure that there is a relatively uh, good flow of power in the system, regardless of things like irradiation uh, va variances, as well as things like dust cover over a period of time on the panels. So um, in terms of the actual so choice, in terms of PV penetration into a genset grid, that would be guided by what is the localized uh, cost of energy as far as the PV system is concerned, and what is the localized cost of energy for the diesel alternative. We have two case scenarios where we can talk about either a low penetration of PV power in a genset grid. And in this case, we are looking at a low penetration. So we can see a peak load of about 1.7, just like in our previous example. And the penetration of PV power here is giving us only about 20% of the energy demand. So considering a diesel power cost of 25 cents per kilowatt hour and PV power costing at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, then you have a potential saving of about uh, 15 cents per kilowatt hour. But then in this case, we are talking about uh, a, a, a scenario whereby you might not even need control of PV power. The opposite would be a high penetration scenario where you have a lot more PV power in integrated into the genset grid. So in this case, we can see that our PV power is peaking at about 1.4 megawatts. And if you look at the load profile, you can see here the consumption is indicated in the dark gray area. We can see that there is a, a space here whereby uh, PV power is in excess of what is the minimum genset loading that we can see here, plus the allowable uh, PV power. Therefore, the load here leaves a bit of unused PV power because uh, we have high PV penetration. And therefore, in this kind of scenario, it's very important that you are able to prevent backfeeding of uh, PV power into the genset grid because that will basically cripple power supply in the system. So in this kind of scenario, we do recommend highly once you are looking at a scenario whereby you're going to inject more than 40% uh, PV power into a generator grid, then consider highly using a PV system controller or other suitable gen genset controllers such as from Elam. Um, the possibilities to control a system, uh, this is just to give you a schematic of how the system would look like. I don't want to dwell too much into this because my colleague has already looked at this, but the Fronius Genset Easy solution is a solution that is uh, designed for low voltage applications and with a single genset, or as my colleague mentioned, with uh, two totally synchronous generators that are starting or stopping at the same time. And therefore, you just need uh, a PV system controller and your CTs. So your, these CTs are actually very important for the system because they're able to communicate to the PV system controller how much power the load is taking from time to time. And therefore, either increase uh, through a Modbus communication channel that we can see here, there are several channels of communication. So the communication between the PV system controller and the Fronius inverters is happening through Modbus RTU. So depending on how much power then the loads is taking at any particular moment, 
the PV system controller is able to communicate to the Fronius inverter to either increase the output or decrease it to match uh, the minimum genset recommendation. The advanced solution uh, with the ELAM controllers would be something slightly different. We can have uh, quite a number of generators into the system, and because uh, our colleagues from ELAM are going to speak about that, I don't want to emphasize uh, or to go into many details about the, uh, this configuration. What is uh, the major difference is the fact that you can have uh, a system that is independent of either low voltage or medium voltage applications, and therefore, also, that means you can have a system with even more than three gensets. So um, in terms of the overall control of the system, the PV system controller, uh, when you're talking about the Fronius uh, PV genset easy solution, the PV system controller becomes the master of the system. And this is looking at a consistent power balance in the system. And this means looking at what is the active and the effective power in the system and managing these fluctuations. So it's, it's very important for the PV system controller to be able to send very uh, fast or rapid messages to the Fronius uh, inverter to be able to uh, either uh, step down uh, the production or scale it up depending on load consumption. Another key important uh, function of the PV system controller is the fact that due to this uh, intelligent control of powering the system, it's affording the generator uh, a means to prolong the operating lifespan of the generator by minimizing wear and tear of the generator. In a graphical representation, uh, this is how the operation of the system would look like. So we have uh, quite a number of key factors here that we can go into. We are looking at, first of all, the consumption, what we can see in the blue line here. We're also looking at uh, the minimum genset load, which is very, very critical. As already mentioned, the genset is the key source of power in the system, and that must be protected at all times. And then we're looking at uh, what is the available PV uh, in the in this entire system. We have to differentiate available PV and actual PV that is being used. So you can have up to 1.4 megawatts of PV power available as per our previous example. But then depending on the load fluctuations, you could be using less than 50% of that from time to time. But this is managed by the PV system controller. So what we can see here is a, a, a sudden drop of the load or what you call a load rejection. And the PV system controller must be able to recognize this very fast and be able to communicate to the Fronius inverters, as we can see here, that there is a sudden drop also in the power production by the Fronius inverters. So this is a, a, a very critical function of the PV system controller. We can see that the generator also uh, dips a bit. Uh, and therefore, if this scenario was not checked, we could have this excess energy from or power from the PV system being injected back into the generator grid. And if this was to happen, of course, we could have a trip uh, mechanism occurring and therefore a power blackout eventually in the system. On the flip side, what we can see is uh, if there is a sudden increase in the load uh, consumption, the generator must have enough spinning reserve to be able to take care of this sudden increase in load. And then uh, consequently, the PV system controller is able to communicate to the Fronius inverter that now you can slightly increase your output. And therefore, as the input increases, the generator starts also reducing the amount of power that is being consumed by the load. And therefore, the factor of the available or the actual PV being used at this point and the generator power fed into the system is giving us the total uh, load power available for consumption. Um, we do have quite a number of references. Um, we can talk about one particular reference uh, for a system in uh, Zimbabwe. The key aspects of this system, we have 150 kVA generator. We also have a PV system that is about 80 kilowatt peak. This system on the front here side was realized by doing uh, four SIMO20 inverters. These are the commercial inverters. The PV system controller also, as we can see in the control panel. And out of this uh, PV integration into this grid, this particular customer is able to save 100 liters of diesel per day, which is quite substantial. 
Another reference site uh, is an installation for an irrigation uh, uh, farm in the Labadon. Uh, the PV system size is 144 kilowatt peak. We have a generator that is 280 kVA. As far as the inverters are concerned, we have six Fronia Simos and a PV system controller, of course. And this system was uh, commissioned in the year 2014. And we can see that uh, it has a very good uh, self-sufficiency rate out of the PV installation of about 40%. So this is going towards now high penetration ratio of PV to genset power. And therefore the PV system controller is a must for this kind of installation. So key compatibilities of uh, Elam and Fronius. As already mentioned uh, at the beginning, all our snap inverters are compatible with PV genset uh, solutions. But when you're looking at an Elam system, then you're talking about mostly commercial installations. And for commercial installations, then we recommend our Simo 20 uh, and uh, from 10 to 20 kilowatts, as well as our Echo 25 to 27 kilowatts. And these are the commercial range of Fronia's snap inverters. So in this uh, example, also we see how the system would look like with Elam control. But this is something that I believe my colleagues from Elam will be looking into. In terms of uh, how easy it is to, start, to set up the system, very, very easy. It's nothing complicated once you get uh, a bit of required information. So you plan the communication architecture and where the, the slave devices in the system. What I can mention here is uh, we are going to look at the Fronius data manager uh, just very briefly. But that is the component that is communicating with the PV system controller, for instance. And this is able now to communicate to all the inverters in the system connected to the data manager on how much power then they should be producing. So once you plan your communication and you have set up the slave uh, devices, then you connect and configure the PV inverter. Uh, this we're not going to be doing today, but this is also something that is very easily done. As far as the advanced solution, when you come to Elam, then you look at autonomous wiring and installation plus the configuration of that. And then in our next uh, page, we look at uh, when you have multiple inverters in the system, as I have mentioned, you need only one inverter with a data manager. So you can have up to 20 inverters connected to, let's say one master inverter. Uh, this is, uh, as you can see in red here, is what we call the Fronius SolarNet ring. And from the first device and the last device, we need what we call a termination uh, plug. So the termination plug is telling the communication, communication loop or the communication protocol that this is the head of the communication ring and therefore all the information requested is routed back to the start. The recommendation for this SolarNet ring is a CAT5 cable uh, shielded. And then each inverter in this uh, communication ring must have a specific address. So in this particular example, we have four inverters. This could be our inverter number one, number two, three, and four. And that assists the data manager to know from which inverter data has been received or not. For those who are aware with or familiar with Fronius inverters, you know that you can order a Fronius inverter with or without a data manager. So if you order an inverter without a data manager, that is called a light version. And therefore, in this kind of configuration, that would be a slave inverter. Looking at the Fronius interfaces available, uh, these are very well clearly laid out. What is very important for our use is the Fronius uh, Modbus uh, channel, this uh, orange plug here. And this is what is now connected to the PV system controller if you have this as your master inverter. Then you have your SolarNet in and out. This is the inverter to inverter communication. So if you have several inverters in the system, then the, you're using these RJ45 ports for looping or daisy chaining one inverter to the next. All the other interfaces are also available, but we are not going to be going into those uh, today. What is important, uh, what has to be selected when you're doing or configuring a PV genset solution? So the special country setup has to be chosen. And the special country setup has is either microgrid 50 or 60, depending on the frequency of the grid that you're operating. So some countries are operating 50 Hertz, others are operating 60 Hertz. So this allows the inverter to adapt a frequency watt characteristic with extended limits, which are fully conf configurable. If you go to the inverter, uh, the Fronius Snap Inverter Series, there is a display on it. 
And when you tap on the second button from the right five times, you are able to get uh, into an area where you can enter the access code. And once you enter this access code 73887, you're able to select now the MG50 or MG60, and then you reboot the inverter to confirm that. So that is very important that for PV genset solutions, the microgrid 50 or 60 hertz has to be selected because for ordinary grid tied installations, we choose specific country settings. So in terms of uh, configuration with, with ULAM, what needs to be taken care of is uh, active power measurements. Then uh, maximum power points have to be set out. Accessible measurements useful for monitoring of the operation, these are required. And then, as I mentioned before, uh, the requirements of the inverter for communication is Modbus uh, TCP or RTU, and this has to be hardwired. So when you are controlling a PV genset solution, they, it is not recommended that you use a, a wireless communication between, let's say, the PV system controller and the data managers. It has to be a hardwired connection. The Fronius data manager, as I mentioned, just to give you a bit of, uh, of brief information, it can theoretically be connected up to 100 inverters, but for PV genset solutions, because of the rapid fluctuations in load that can happen, we recommend a maximum of 20 inverters. So in some specialized instances, we can have as low as six inverters connected to a data manager, but this is something that can be discussed between now the uh, genset controller or the ELAM controller for, for that matter, and uh, to, to, to achieve the right kind of regulation in the system. So the data manager, this is the card as it appears in your inverter, but this is inbuilt now, would be uh, your web server and will also allow the communication from your inverter into SolarWeb for monitoring. And that can also be done as a solar TV in your premises. So if you have quite a number of systems that you've done, you can have a solar TV installed whereby you can have a quick glance into how each of your systems is operating. The interfaces available, uh, the most important ones would be Modbus TCP or Modbus RTU, and also solar API Jason. And uh, the inverter also can allow for control using digital IOs, whereby you can manage uh, external loads depending on how much uh, energy is available in the system as an excess. And therefore, make sure that your PV consumption is as high as possible. So in terms of data communication, what is happening uh, with the data manager, as I have mentioned, this could be a Fronius PV system controller, but in this case can also be for ordinary systems, uh, a smart meter. So the communication between that and the data manager would be a Modbus RTU channel. The data manager can also be operated in parallel to that party monitoring platforms. Uh, so in this case, uh, maybe an e-power monitor or something like this. So all you need is an internet connection or a local connection that can be operated via a Modbus TCP channel. And then of course, from the data manager, you can go directly over the internet into SolarWeb or ELAM portal for monitoring. To configure the systems, uh, they are very nice uh, wizards, both available, let's say for the PV system easy uh, solution from Fronius and also from ELAM. So there are some very nicely laid out uh, wizards that you can use to configure your systems. And these are not difficult at all, but uh, it's just a, se a quick session that can guarantee that you know how to use these interfaces. Fronia support, how to get Fronia support. If you're thinking, for instance, about designing a PV genset solution, we are very happy to offer you this kind of support. Uh, we have strategic uh, system partners all over the world. We have uh, technical sales advisors like uh, our colleagues situated in South Africa, West Africa, and myself in East Africa. And then also for after sales service, we have our technical support department in Austria that is able to take care of all after support uh, queries. To get even further details, you can go into our home pages uh, for Elam also, and also our YouTube channels to be able to see different topics that you can, that can help you to use our systems or to even design our systems and configuration and commissioning of the same. And then uh, any particular requests from any part of Africa and also for all the other attendees from outside of Africa, 
you have our contact details here for Fronius, and then I believe Elam is also going to share their contact information. And I believe with, with that, uh, I've come to the end of the second session for Fronius, and now I'll be handing over to my colleague from uh, Elam to take over the presentation. Victorian, uh, I hand over the controls to you now. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much, uh, David. Thank you, Mohamed, for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Fronius, for giving us the opportunity to talk about that uh, very interesting uh, subject today. So I'm a Victorian sales manager for Southern Africa. Uh, and first, I will start with some facts about uh, Illum Energy. Uh, so Illum Energy is a French company. We have offices in Paris, Casablanca, and in Cape Town, where I am right now. Uh, we are doing and we are experts on monitoring and control system for microgrids for hybrid sites we've now over than 100 sites uh, equipped in more than uh, 40 countries with really really uh, strong and reliable uh, partners like for for example so Illuminage is uh, operating on different fields uh, and different type of sites my main focus here will be really on cni applications so commercial and industrial application but Illum is also providing solutions for telecom towers, utility scale projects, uh, utility scale power plants. But my focus here will really be on, on commercial industrial sites. One of our strengths is our compatibility. We are really able to integrate with uh, different types, different brands uh, of device. It can be different types of inverters, different types of genset controllers, different types of battery PCS uh, to really bring standardization in the process. Of course, we also value and rely on, on strong relationship with uh, inverter partners like Fronius, where our integration is, is well proven and where we really have local partnership in every country, every region we, we are operating. Let's uh, move first uh, on, on a bit of uh, concept definition. First, with what is a microgrid. So basically, a microgrid is an energy distribution network that will rely on local means of producing electricity and solar diesel hybrid system, which are a type of hybrid system where basically the solar uh, power is combined from photovoltaic system with another energy source. So it can be it can be batteries, it can be grid, it can be uh, backup sources like diesel generator. Two main uh, configuration in sub-Saharan Africa, poor grid systems and off-grid systems, and we're gonna go deeper into those concepts. First, poor grids. So mainly poor grids are extremely sensitive to uh, load imbalance. So we can have frequency fluctuation and it's really hard. And sometimes they are unable to maintain stability and those grid often collapse. Uh, where it's really important to have a PV diesel integration solution, as said by uh, Mohamed previously, because basically if you don't have that type of uh, integration solution, you will basically lose your solar, uh, solar production during the blackout or during the load shedding because the inverters will shut down without an EMS or without an integration uh, solution. This is a standard configuration, basic configuration of a grid tight system. Here, our e-power control will be wired to the different parts of this microgrid. So to the PV inverters directly, to the genset controllers, if you have several uh, gensets. Uh, we'll put meters if you don't have a genset controllers. We'll also put meters for the grid. And this e-power control will really master the site with inbuilt and autonomous control. So on top of this uh, um, local controller, you'll have our monitoring platform, e-power monitor really follow and monitor all your data and even do a remote control remote control sorry but we will discuss also this monitoring platform later in terms of uh, features for grid tight applications mostly we will follow two rules uh, first the grid feeding management rule uh, where you will be able to export or not onto the grid depending on on uh, what you want to do on site and also when you will switch to genset connected mode, the minimum genset loading, also as explained uh, by Fronius uh, previously, where we'll be able to keep the genset and multiple gensets uh, to a minimum loading uh, and to still 
keep the PV kicking uh, while uh, gensets are running. Some study cases for grid tile application and uh, poor grid applications. So we see, has said a lot of uh, CNI facilities. It can be farms, it can be shopping malls or whatever, where PV diesel uh, genset integration is really here to, to mitigate load shedding and mitigate uh, blackout impact. But also a lot of uh, fuel station banks, uh, particularly a lot of them uh, on the Nigerian market and the Kenyan markets, uh, where basically the system will integrate PV and genset uh, to monitor fuel stations or bank facilities. Now let's talk also about uh, off-grid system because our controller can also operate on totally off-grid sites. The goal here, um, where obviously the system is not connected uh, to the grid, uh, is really to maximize solar production rate and also, of course, reduce uh, as much as we can fuel cost and CO2 footprint. So same kind um, of, of basically schematics here. Uh, the controller will be wired also to the PV inverters, the Jensen controllers, uh, but at this time also with the, um, the battery controllers and with the battery PCS, uh, where we'll be able to curtail PV inverters to optimize really the, the charging uh, of, the, of the batteries, of keeping, for example, the minimum genset loading. Here again, some features. Uh, always the minimum genset loading, for sure, but we'll be able also to do spinning reserve optimization uh, when we can to really optimize uh, um, and maximize the renewable penetration, but also diesel off mode uh, when, when, for example, the battery capability uh, is, is sufficient, we'll be able to switch on and off some, some gensets. Again, some study cases. We see, of course, a lot of uh, rural electrification for off-grid study cases. A uh, lot of uh, solar diesel genset BESS mini grids uh, for rural po populations, but also uh, bigger, bigger plants, power stations for for small towns or stuff like that. Uh, and also, what we do is utility scale uh, power plants, so la large power plants, where we'll be able to. Uh, basically match the grid code uh, uh, requirements. Uh, let's hear a bit about our product portfolio and the different uh, products uh, we, we have. In, in a general way, the, the core values of our EPO control products um, are that we consider it's really tailored solution for each application that really allow us to be cost effective on every type of site. Uh, we like to say that we sell premium, uh, premium and reliable products with really uh, an outstanding uh, service support. If we are taking taking a look uh, at some of our products and some of our best sellers, uh, first the hybrid fuel saver, which is basically a controller for PV diesel integration only, uh, that will be able to handle multiple uh, genset sites. So where we basically we do minimum genset loading and grid feeding management. Uh, so this type of product can be used uh, either for grid tile application, but also for off-grid uh, applications. It can be, of course, equipped on, on factories, on shopping malls, uh, on farms. We also have uh, our MC controller, which is microgrid controller, which is really a controller tailored uh, for application where you'll have uh, battery PCS and battery uh, application. Uh, same way of, of functioning here, we'll, we'll make sure that we maximize really the, the PV penetration and we optimize the energy uh, stored into the, into the batteries. Um, and finally, our, our power plant controller, which is really for utility scale project and highly customized projects. Uh, basically, technologically, we, we are quite able to do everything with that controller. Uh, it can really be uh, customized for every type of application, can come with a synoptic screen and stuff like that. So really for big application or for um, highly customized applications. So from all those uh, controller on site, you'll be able to um, access our, our very nice configuration interface and local configuration interface. Uh, that are making our project really easy to install, 
uh, really easy to commission. Um, that's why also uh, David talked about autonomous commissioning on our side. Um, it's really a smooth interface where you will be able to uh, set up the different things. So here is just an overview of the production. So really uh, real time monitoring. Uh, but you will be able really to access in detail to uh, all the, the values from the different devices. Uh, on, on configuration steps, you will really be able to see what is connected to which uh, port, uh, whether you, you like to use, uh, like I said previously, Modbus ITU and RS-485 cable or Modbus TCP uh, and Ethernet cable. Uh, so it's really making the installation and the commissioning super smooth. Uh, especially in those times where where we don't have to, we, where we don't need to have uh, a lot of people on site, it's really it's really an advantage. And you can also from this panel set your minimum loading, uh, choosing the different meters, and start and stop the EMS. And on top of that, so the the second level for us in terms of monitoring will be our remote monitoring and control platform, ePower Monitor, where you'll be able to really follow your data, where you'll be able to perform uh, ONM tasks, uh, and when you will be able to act uh, sometimes on different equipment on site from a distance or from the platform directly. Uh, yeah, some screenshots uh, about ePower Monitor, about the, the standard uh, visualization. Uh, this platform is also highly customizable. Uh, so we can really fit the, the platform to, to your needs and to the end client needs. Uh, you can edit uh, alarms, of course, to, to uh, do some, some one on sites. Uh, yeah. Uh, some use cases. So I've, I've talked uh, of, some, of some references already, but another site with only uh, solar design integration in Gambia and some important uh, references with uh, Fronius in particular. So we, we had, uh, since quite a long time, some data loggers equipped uh, on some gas stations in Nigeria, Morocco, and other countries, uh, where we have been able, at first, to, to try really our compatibility with, uh, with Fronius. Uh, some other sites here in Morocco, again, uh, where basically the microgrid controller was uh, capable of handling the genset, the batteries, and the PV. Uh, again, with uh, with Fronius inverters. Uh, something that is quite recent and it's uh, actually commissioned uh, right now, uh, which is a really nice site with uh, four gensets, where we'll be equipped our hybrid fuel server. So the the hybrid fuel server is getting commissioned uh, exactly right now, um, which is a really good application in Peru. Uh, with an hydro power unit, uh, which is quite uh, interesting. Uh, also, we send, of course, uh, some of our controllers to Fronius uh, R&D Lab uh, to really make sure that uh, our product will be will be running together, and that's the way we would be, and we have been able actually to really validate it and, and uh, strengthen really our, our partnership with uh, with Fronius. And yeah, that was uh, that was all for me. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you to all the, the attendees. Uh, I'm, I'm super open for, for some uh, questions and for the Q&A session. Uh, so I will hand over back uh, to one of the Fronius guys, Cyprian, maybe. Uh, 